Hello everyone, welcome to UBS Trending. I'm Anthony Pastore. Thanks so much for joining us today for part one of our two-part series on 529 plans. Education is one of the pillars of our society and 529 accounts are investment accounts that enable you to save money for a beneficiary to pay for education expenses in a tax advantaged way. So here at UBS, we are celebrating 529 day May 29th, perfect, right? By welcoming two guest speakers from two of the most important 529 players in the industry. Rachel Ramos, she's a senior product manager from Capital Group's College America 529 plan, and Chris Adrian, vice president and 529 specialist from New York's 529 advisor guided college savings program. Uh, Chris and Rachel, it's such a pleasure to have you both here on this perfectly timed day of May 29th, although the May 29th falls on a Sunday, so we're airing this a little bit earlier, but it's really nice to have you both joining us. Thanks for being here. And Chris, I thought maybe I would start with you, uh, and this might be the most perfect question to start off our conversation. And when we think about what's going on in the world today, we've got a lot of market volatility, we've got all kinds of things happening from a market perspective. So why are 529 accounts so important for today's world? Yeah, thank you so much for the invitation, Anthony. Good afternoon to all of your UBS clients, and thank you so much for joining us. We all want what's best for our loved ones whether it be for our own children, our grandchildren, even our best friend's children. We always want them to be happy and to succeed. But really importantly, we don't want them to be burdened with student loan debt when they graduate from college. And I know that this is a common worry amongst parents across the country. I myself have two kids. I have a 10 and a 14-year-old. And this is definitely top of mind in my own household. So it's really important to think about a number of factors when it comes to saving and investing for college. The first one is tuition and inflation. Now, tuition inflation is the fastest growing household expense in the country today. On average, it grows about 6% each year. And over the last four decades, tuition inflation has grown 840% um, cumulatively over the last four decades. And then if you think about medical care as another big household expense, it's grown half as fast, only 446% over that same time horizon. So that's the first major factor to think about, that tuition inflation is growing about 6% each year. It's really important for families to think about not just saving for college, but investing for college to keep up with tuition inflation. The second major factor to think about is financial aid. And a lot of families across the country do receive financial aid packages, which is great. For the average family, it's about $7,300 in scholarships, and that's each year. It should cover about 12% of an average four-year public school. So while 12% of college might be covered by scholarships, how do we help fund the other 88%? And then the other thing to think about is the cost of college. So when we think about the future costs of college, and we extrapolate out 18 years for newborn today, because of that tuition inflation factor of almost 6%, for a newborn, it will be roughly 236,000 for four years of in-state public school and roughly 536,000 for four years of private school. So again, really important to think about what's your number might look like in the future for your children and for your household. And your UBS advisor can definitely help you determine what percentage of that goal you might want to cover and how much you need to put in each month, each quarter, each year to be able to achieve that goal. So again, really important for families to think about investing for college just to keep up with that tuition inflation factor. Yeah, Chris, that number is so staggering. I think a lot of us can't imagine what 840% inflation actually looks like. Um, as you said, it's about 6% per year on average. And of course, that 840% is a four-decade number. But that's still such a significant increase. So clearly, as you're talking about here, and we're going to get into more of this, investing today is the best way to combat that type of inflation that you'll see over the next, you know, especially if you've got little kids right now, they're going to be going to college in 15 years or so. Uh, there could be some more changes. So uh, thanks for that. So Rachel, let me bring you in. Uh, by the way, I heard that 
you are celebrating the 20 year anniversary of College America. That's quite, uh, quite an achievement and certainly a milestone. So first of all, congratulations. But let me ask you, with that 20 year number in mind, what would you say has changed in the past 20 years when you think about not only what we're talking about here with inflation and all the costs of school, but just with 529 plans as well? What has changed in the past 20 years? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Anthony and Chris. Uh, it's great to be here with both of you today. And yes, we are in fact uh, celebrating our 20-year anniversary for College America. Our plan has paved the path for over a million families nationwide saving for higher education. So if we think back to the late 1990s, actually 1996, Section 529 was added to the Internal Revenue Code authorizing tax-free status for qualified tuition programs, or we know them as 529 plans. Since then, the industry offers over 90 plans as options, which could be quite overwhelming for someone who's making a selection. This really does underscore, however, the importance of an advisor-client relationship in terms of someone's goals and their savings objectives. I would suggest guidance here is going to be the key to success. And I believe there's always going to be a need for education and the opportunity to be proactive in this space. As Chris mentioned, whether you've got 10 and 14 year olds at home or younger or even older, you know, thinking about how we're going to pay for a portion or all of their higher education. And Chris, to your question, so much in the industry has changed over the last 20 years. 529s are no longer exclusive to four-year brick-and-mortar universities. They allow you to think beyond, think about vocational, trade schools, um, apprenticeships, you know, thinking uh, broader than the four-year university. And the most recent change is that now you can save up to $10,000 per year for K-12 through private education and you can also use the money to repay student loans up to $10,000. So a little bit of good news here is 45% of Americans recognize 529s as education savings plans. However, it still highlights that 55% are still not familiar with these programs. Like Chris said, the price of education is a top concern. Americans continue to be burdened by student loan debt now more than ever. There are a collective 1.75 million, uh, excuse me, trillion dollars in student loan debt, and that's spread out amongst 44.7 Americans. 69% of students took out student loans and graduated with that average debt north of, let's say, $30,000. So the fact that 529s not only allow you to repay student loans, that's a huge improvement, but again, thinking broader. Additionally, books, supplies, computers, those are all deemed qualified distribution expenses. And parents can also use 529 assets for room and board for students living at home. Uh, yeah, I was really surprised on that last bit that you just mentioned, Rachel, that you can actually use room and board for kids living at home, students living at home. Considering what we've all been through with the pandemic, it's sort of changed the way we think about schooling, more of a virtual world. So that's certainly something that I'm sure a lot of parents can rejoice in, parents, guardians, grandparents, et cetera. So thanks for sharing those with us. A lot of changes there. Uh, and congrats on the 20 years. So Chris, let me bring you back in. In addition to the, uh, the tax-free distributions for qualified expenses, what are some of the other benefits of 529s? Yeah, there's three other major benefits that I wanted to talk about, Anthony. The first one is affordability. And the great news about 529s is they typically have very low investment minimums to get in, very easy to get started. There's no age limit. You can actually start it before you even have children. You can Name it in your own, as you can name yourself as beneficiary. And then once the child is born, you can actually switch it to that child. And most importantly, there's no income limit. So any family can invest in within a 529. And this allows you to take advantage of that power of compounding. The earlier you get started, the more you're going to have invested for your child in the long run. And the second major benefit or advantage of 529s is the control factor. So the account owner of a 529 always maintains control of the account. 
even when the child reaches the age of majority. And you're also free to change a beneficiary on a 529 up to first cousin. So it does follow the family line up to first cousin and pretty flexible that way. You can also use unused 529s for future generations. So if you have a leftover balance, you can actually hold it to perpetuity and continue to pass it down the family line. And then the third major benefit that I wanted to talk about is the tax benefit. Some states across the country have what's called a state tax deduction if you invest within a 529, and it's an annual state tax deduction. Some states, unfortunately, don't have a state tax deduction. Those states are tax neutral. Um, those states, for example, are states like Florida, Texas, California. So Jeff, definitely check with your UBS advisor to determine which state you might live in. And some states are what's called tax parity. And that means you get a state tax deduction no matter what 529 plan you invest in. Within the state of New York, for example, um, you're eligible for a state tax deduction up to $5,000 if you're an individual tax filer or up to $10,000 if you're married filing jointly. And again, that's an annual state tax deduction when you contribute to a 529 plan. So definitely some great additional benefits of 529s beyond the ones that Rachel just mentioned. Great. Uh, and Rachel, yeah, anything to add there? Because I, I understand there are also some changes perhaps to uh, state planning. Um, anything else you also could add to what Chris was talking about here? Yeah, absolutely. And well said, Chris. You know, when you think about those in state or even in some cases out of state tax benefits, that's where your financial advisor can certainly help add uh, extra value. Um, in the estate planning realm, starting in 2022, the annual gift tax exception was raised to $16,000 per beneficiary by the IRS which means you can contribute more to your 529 without incurring gift tax consequences. Uh, 529s are often even bigger benefits when you refer to them as super funding a 529. And what that means is this would allow one to make five years worth of tax-free gifts in a single year, so up to $80,000 for a single file or $160,000 if you file jointly with your spouse. Now, Chris mentioned earlier control as a benefit, which is a very common concern families have. What if they don't know if the kid's going to attend uh, college or um, some type of trade school? 529s offer flexibility over the account assets and distributions, unlike a taxable custodial account that uh, could be a uniform transfer or gift to minors act. This allows someone who doesn't know if their beneficiary is going to attend school, they have that peace of mind that the money will be earmarked for higher education within the family as the account is passed on to another member of the family. Terrific. Rachel, thank you. I can't thank you both enough, Chris and Rachel, for joining us. I know there are many families out there. I'm an uncle of three nieces, and you know, I, I also understand that I can participate in this too. You don't have to be the parent of the child or the guardian. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for everybody to get involved and, and fund and invest in, in a child's education. But really, thank you so much for all this info. I know it can be a little confusing for a lot of folks. So Thanks, thanks for being here to both of you. And if anybody is interested in learning more about the College America 529 or the New York's 529, you can visit these two websites, which we're going to put up here on your screen, ny529advisor.com and capitalgroup.com. So again, thank you to Chris and Rachel for joining. And to learn more about 529 college savings offerings, reach out to your financial advisor to discuss your portfolio. Chris and Rachel said that a number of times, and I'll repeat it for you as well. They are the best person to talk to when it comes to investing in lots of ways, including a 529 plan. You can also follow, by the way, UBS on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out all of our past UBS trending episodes on demand. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day, everyone, and make sure to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.